Remember the fall of 2007, Alicia Keys, teenage love affair? It's a matter of extreme importance. Our first Barinkin love affair? That's right. Steve here. We're about to dive into the world of being an in-route controller and providing a push control services to the finest class Delta in the Caribbean, the Rafael Hernandez Barinkin Aguadilla Airport. I know I'm really excited. This is a fun part of the job. Uh, this is going to be a multiple part series. We're going to start with the very basics here. Today is going to be a lot of sighting of the 7110.65. This is aimed to give you a shield of armor, give you the tools and the shield of armor to say, hey, I'm following the rules. We're going to cite the rules, which ones you're using and make our way through the weeds uh, to be a great uh, approach controller while sitting at R8 as an in route controller. So it's a fun hat to wear. I'm excited. We're going to have a great time and I will see you at the next slide. So you're saying to yourself on the sector, but I'm a en route controller, damn it. I have people skills and that, that's true. You very well may do great in public interface, but you're a controller and guess what? Even en route controller can provide approach control services. So let's talk about what that looks like. So let's see what the 7110.65 has to say about our role in providing approach control services. What chapters apply to us at R8 here at San Juan Center in R8 in particular or R2 and R8, if you're working them combined, the same rule applies to a, both a uh, solitary configuration and a combined configuration. There's going to be some strip marking. It's good. Uh, just get you back in the mix of things. So without further ado, let's jump right in, full feet into a uh, miniature scenario. I'll see you later. Okay, so picture this. It's a weeknight. You sit down. You just plugged in. You had the relief briefing from your buddy. And they told you that Night Cargo A114, they took the handoff from Santa Domingo and they are there just past the boundary, but they haven't called yet. So here it is. They call you. San Juan Center, Night Cargo A114, level 0900. Okay. So not the best check in, right? We know this aircraft lands Aguadilla, right? It says right there in the flight progress trip, right? Santiago to Brinkin. Every weeknight this flight occurs. Right now, I'm not picking on iCargo in particular because usually they check in and give you everything you need. But for the sake of this presentation, we need to pry some information out of the aircraft to illustrate the point. Right. So there's some guidance that is offered. Right. I'm sure you have an idea of what to say, whether you've been working the D side and you hear the R side continuously work approaches into Aguadilla. But the fun part about this is everything that we are about to teach you is going to coincide with being referenced to the 7110. So that's good. Right, because everything that you're going to rattle off, like, just like a pro, whether it be downstairs in the Dyson environment or upstairs in OJT environment, it's going to be backed up by reference, right? 7110. So I'm excited. Let's go to a bullet point and let's talk some things over. Okay, so first things first, what is our reply to Night Cargo 8114, right? We can't have just have dead air. We can't ignore the aircraft, right? The aircraft's got to land. The joke about air traffic control is we haven't left one up there yet, <laughs> right? So how can we do this by the book? That book being the Holy Bible of the ATC, the 7110.65. Uh, what do we need to give our D side so they can fulfill their duties, right? We know as a D side that they are responsible for helping us out uh, with the coordination process with Aguadilla Tower. Um, is there a way we can have all these items we need to say on one nice smooth transmission? Well, heck yeah, we're about to teach you that. So let's give it a go. Here we go back to the sector with our dialogue with Night Cargo 8114. All right, so no more than five seconds later, we're going to click the mic and we're going to give Night Cargo this. Night Cargo 8114, Sam 1 Center, clear direct ODES. Expect RNAV, runway 8 approach, information Charlie current. Advise when you have Charlie. Perfect. That transmission just took care of a lot of things, right? And you see uh, the strip is updated with them being on frequency and at altitude from their initial check-in, right? Perfect. Let's see how the 7110 uh, validates that transmission. Let's see how this stands up. I'll see you at the next slide. All right, so great job with that transmission, right? It was smooth. There was some content to it. There was some meat in it, right? Even if you don't think so. So... Do you know what, did you know what you just said complies with all provisions of 7110.65? If you don't believe me, I'll show you. Okay, first transmission, other than Night Carrier 114, San Juan Center, right? That's a given. Clear direct ODES. 4-4-1, route use. Clear aircraft via routes consistent with the altitude stratum in which the operation is to be conducted by one of the more of the following, right? Now, there's a whole bunch of fluff. You'll see there are J routes, Q routes, T routes, V routes, uh, 
fixed radial distances, VORs, uh, the radials of VORs, but let's fast forward to what we need. Fixes slash waypoints defined in terms of offset from published or established air traffic server route at a specified distance and direction for random impromptu RNAV routes. RNAV routes, that's it. It's, ODES is an RNAV waypoint, right? And we are giving them direct to that fix. Perfect. Good job with that. Let's keep moving on in the transmission. Expect RNAV runway 8 approach 4 7 10. Approach information. Type of approach to be expected. Very simple. Now, some people say, well, Steve, I see on the plate it says RNAV in parentheses GPS approach. Well, if you fast forward a little bit or flip through the pages, 4 8 1 says in italics, right? So it's one of the notations, approach name items contained with parentheses. For example, RNAV GPS runway 4, right? Only 4 degrees off of what we're working with or 40 degrees off of what we're working here are not included in approach clearance phraseology. So you can take it as a couple of ways. When you give the approach clearance, you, may, you don't have to state the GPS, but maybe in your initial what to expect RNAV GPS runway 8 approach, I don't think it's entirely wrong. Um, I kind of stopped doing it. I used to do it all the time, but I just, for the sake of brevity, I just cut it out. But it's your choice. You do not have to do it, though. You are not mandated to. There's nothing that says you are forbidden to do it, but you can do it. So just giving you that little option there. So uh, let's move on to our next statement in that uh, past transmission. See you there. Okay, so we said information Charlie Current advise when you have Charlie, both 4-7-10 and 2-9-2. Give us some guidance on this. So 4710 says approach information A, both en route and terminal approach control sectors must provide current approach information to aircraft destined to airports for which they provide approach control services. Sounds like that's what we're doing, right? We're providing approach control services to Night Cargo 114 through the Rafael Hernandez Airport, which is in R8 airspace, right? But this information must be provided on initial contact or as soon as possible thereafter. So what we didn't do was wrong. What, did, what was the first thing we said? Night Cargo 114 San Juan Center, clear direct ODES, and then we, we carried on with our transmission. That's fine, as soon as possible. It's all in the same transmission, so don't worry. We're going to get this information from the crew of Night Cargo 114. We're going to make sure they have information Charlie, which is current. And like I said, as soon as possible, we're not going to give any fluff transmissions in between. We are going to get what the 7110 wants us to get from the crew of Night Cargo 8114. Approach information contained in the ATIS broadcast may be omitted if the pilot states the appropriate ATIS code, which they did not. But like I said, not to pick on Night Cargo 114, they usually set the perfect example of uh, phraseology, really, because it's the same crew every time, and they are really nice to work with. So if they're watching this, hey, it's it's always a pleasure. Um, and then two niner two, uh, operating procedures three C one C, right? Just find your way as you peruse the seventy one ten when you're on the beach reading. Uh, controllers must ensure that all pilots receive the most current pertinent information by taking the following actions as applicable. When a pilot does not state having appropriate data code on initial contact, ask the pilot to confirm receipt of the current ATIS code or information. Perfect. That's what we did. So he didn't check in with it, right? They probably have it. But we just asked them to advise when they do, right? So they're going to turn in the ATIS on their radio, and they're going to come back and give us that information. Perfect. And that takes care of that initial uh, check-in. So let's keep this uh, going, these positive vibes going. Uh, so far, so good. And I'll see you at the next slide. All right, so you're like, Steve, hold the phone, man. This is some heavy stuff here. Uh, chapter five is radar. What, why are we in chapter four here? And you know what? I agree with you. I love chapter five. Chapter five is fantastic, right? It's like the, the chapter of Genesis in the Bible for approach controllers, right? And today we're wearing approach controllers hat, but our hands are tied. In short, we don't have the final approach course depicted, right? So we don't satisfy that position, right? It's an equipment issue here. Uh, we don't have the final approach course etched on the map, right? For the RNAV runway to approach there at Aguadilla. Sectors 8 range is larger than 150 miles, so we're kind of limited there. And we don't have an additional display, right? Maybe a secondary display, uh, like if you're sitting at R4 and the R6 scope's real close to you. Uh, that We don't have that, nor does that non-existent scope have a range of 125 miles. So we can't. So if you read this 591, chapter in the 7110, uh, it's going to direct you back to where we're at. So it, thus, this directs us back to chapter four. So it's going to say, if these situations are, uh, are not met, right, this criteria is not met, uh, we're going to direct you back to 481. So that's okay. This is going to be for another day. Maybe one day we'll get uh, arranged in at uh, Aguadilla, or maybe someday you'll be an approach controller. Um, 
but yeah, so this is not applicable to us. Okay, so back to Night Cargo 114. Alrighty, so no more than 20 seconds later, while Night Cargo 8114 dials in and listens to the ATIS, they're going to hit you back with Night Cargo 114 has Charlie. Night Cargo 8114, Roger Cross, Odez, at or above 3000, cleared straight in RNAV runway 8 approach. And as you see, you're marking up your strip, right cross, Odez at or above 3,000 with the, you know, nice little fancy arrow to the ground and the time at which you administered the clearance. So great job with that. We're going to explain that straight in caveat in the next slide. So join me there. I'll see you there. All right. So we are back to the joyous, wonderful uh, radar monitoring of air of Night Cargo 8114. They're on approach out of 4,500. We put the Odez uh, thing in the scratch pad, right? Because that's where they're going direct to. And we also put the approach um, alphabetical uh, assigned altitude identifier there. So it's really good. And we just went over that checklist, right? Things are looking good. So what are we going to hit him back with? Let's finish this job. My Cargo 8114 radar service terminated. Contact Aguadilla Tower 124.95. Great opportunity to practice your frequency change here in radar service termination. So uh, good job with that. And uh, I think we'll see you at the next slide. Okay, so if you haven't noticed by now, everything that we have sent from the Night Cargo 8114's initial check-in up to this point has been with a purpose, and the frequency change is no different, right? Obviously, contact Aguadilla Tower 124.95 is self-evident, right? That, that's the initial chapters of the 7110, but that radar service terminate caveat has to be done because of this. Five. 113 radar service termination to inform an aircraft when radar service is terminated and it has a whole bunch of situations but here's ours at towered control airports where radar coverage does not exist to within one half mile of the end of the runway arriving aircraft must be informed when radar service is terminated perfect very simple that satisfies that condition now there's an argument you know that the Barinkin radar sensor right the the arsr is based at the field and sometimes you see aircraft moving around on the field you'll see their beacon code right I am not at the, in a position of authority to actually say that radar coverage does exist, but don't be surprised if it does, but know that we are following this rule for that very reason. So good job with that. And uh, so far, so good. Let's keep this going. All right. So now you're like, Steve, that was great for an instrument approach. That's pretty easy. What about visual approaches, right? Some of these aircraft we're going to be working uh, are unable RNAV procedures, right? There's a lot of aircraft that are like that. So Excellent, let's cover that, right? And it's not too much harder than what we just did. In some ways it's easier, in some ways it's more challenging, right? But in a lot of ways, it's a lot more fun and I prefer visual approaches to that. So just keep in mind the things that have, we have learned, a lot of things have not changed, right? Um, you know, after Kate Talk, clear direct Barinkin, right? Um, after Maya, clear direct Barinkin, depart. Maya heading this, you know, vector sequence, right? You're going to use all of your radar phraseology that you have learned or that you can study in the 7110. Nothing changes with uh, making sure they have the ATIS, making sure they know of the uh, type of approach. Expect visual approach runway 8, right? Night carrier 114. Uh, after K talk, clear direct break and expect visual approach runway 8, right? All that phraseology stays the same. So what changes? Uh, don't sweat this. Let's use what we learned plus some basic ATC, right? That's what we're going to do. We are going to figure this out. Chapter seven, uh, visual is going to help us out. So, okay, knowing some things in chapter seven, you know, if you want to take a look at it now, but we're going to cover some things there, knowing that we're going to be armed yet again with knowledge and being backed up by the all powerful omnipotent 7110, we're going to get through this fine. So I'll see you there. Awesome. So look at where we are met with. We're met with a little bit of Jet A, right? A little JetBlue 1092 action. Airbus A320 with those B2500 is looking good. And we have Night Cargo 8114, our usual customer there, right? So we are under the impression, right, that we sat down and we did everything we needed to do, right? Gave, uh, verified they had the ATIS, right? Told them what approach to expect and stuff like that. So if you want to practice that, that'd be great. It'd be, you know, it'd be something like JetBlue 1092, Sam 1 Center. Uh, send and maintain 3,000 expect RNAV runway 8 approach, right? Detect it with the right frequency. Night Carrier 114, San Juan Center, depart K Talk, direct Brink, expect visual approach runway 8, right? Just let it rattle off the tongue, right? Practice it, right? Practice it even when you're not looking at, at data tags, right? You can do this when you're doing housework, when you're cleaning the, your kitchen, right? You know, just rattle off a call sign, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of fun. It is fun, I promise you. It'll become fun. So here we are. We fast forward, we took care of all of that red tape that the 7110 requires us. And here we are, JetBlue 1092, Aguadilla Airport, 11 
block one five mile support and field site. Like I said, every transmission we have made so far in this presentation has been done with a purpose. And this isn't just because we want something to do and have them, hey, look, it's Aguadilla out there, JetBlue 1092, you know? No, we are asking the report field and site, and you might ask why. Well, even though this uh, picture, this freeze frame of the radar scope is not to scale, JetBlue 1092 is making their way really close to one, being inside 10 miles to the airport, 10 mile DME from the airport, and we definitely don't want them to enter a class delta without, you know, a radio, without them calling Alvadia Tower. And by our LOA, we have to do the frequency change 10 miles out or prior to 10 miles out. So we want them to see the airport, right? We need to paint the picture for them. We want them to see the city lights of Rincon and Aguadilla, and we want them to see the airport, the beacon. Now we know that the tower is open, right? So just keep that in mind. That detail is gonna be covered later. And beautifully said, JetBlue 1092, Aguadilla in sight. Perfect. JetBlue 1092, clear visual approach from way eight. Perfect, just like your last, you just changed one type of approach for the other. Now, you know what to do, right? You're certified on D8, get on the phone. You're the D side can get on the phone. Chances are you've done this as a D side many times. And it's probably made you feel real good to be involved in you know, coordinating and stuff like that. Aguadilla Tower, R8 or D8 position, Aguadilla Tower, one five miles northwest of the airport, JetBlue 1092, visual approach runway eight. Perfect, wonderful. Now, nothing's going to preclude you from saying goodbye to JetBlue 1092, right? So it's a great opportunity to practice your phraseology and stuff like that. And now you're saying, well, Steve, what, why did you put the ATIS down there, right? Everything has a purpose. We'll see in just a second. I'll see you at the next slide. Okay, so just remember that Chapter 7, right, covers visual stuff, right? So let me read you right from the 7110, right? Chapter seven, a vector for visual approach may be initiated if the reported ceiling at the airport of intended landing is at least 500 feet above the MVA, MIA, and the visibility of three miles or greater. Luckily, we gave you a really cake ATIS code, right? It was clear below 1, 2,000. Um, uh, the visibility was greater than 10 miles. So you're good. But just remember, if it's a marginal day, and we know that thunderstorms circumnavigate the Aguadilla Joshi area every day, right? It feels like there's a thunderstorm every day and it builds, it's clear in the morning, and then sure enough, when it's time for all these aircraft to land Aguadilla, the weather is absolutely crappy. So just keep in mind, you are looking for visibility of three miles or greater. Good, that's like a basic VFR minimum, right? But that 500 feet above the MVA or MIA is tricky, right? Because we know that there's a diverse area uh, diverse topography in that area where there are some higher MIAs and MBAs and others, right? So just keep that in mind. And if you need to, this is the opportunity for me to present to you a technique of when you sit down prior to training, I would sit down an empty scope and I would design a nice Aguadilla setup, right? Zoom in on Aguadilla, maybe have Mayaguez and Ponce in there, have Joshi and Boca, you know, Dorado area, a little bit of Santa Domingo, a little bit of Sector 6, and you have a nice zoom in. So all you have to do is just zoom in and check up on the progress. And in that, you should put up your MIA, right? Put up your MIA map. That'd be great too. It's nice contrasted in purple and you have all the areas. So you know how low can you go, right? And how to comply with this when you're vectoring aircraft for the visual approach. So keep that in mind. So um, the aircraft, following some more requirements here, the aircraft needs, one, the airport or runway inside airports with an operating control tower. Okay, keep that in mind. You have two options there, either the airport or the runway. But if the tower is closed, or we're talking Ponce and Mayaguez, the, air, the airport in sight, right? The runway in sight doesn't matter, right? The airport in sight is what matters to us there. So just remember. The aircraft is number one in the approach sequence. Good, JetBlue 1092 is. So perfect, we didn't have any uh, thing to be a hurdle in our way from doing that. So we satisfied all of these. Uh, good job, now back to Nike A114 to finish this off. Okay, one aircraft down, one to go. JetBlue 1092, you see is established on the visual approach, reaching 3,000 feet. We put the VIS alphabetical uh, designator for assigned altitude there with the tower. So now Nike Cargo 114 is our next target. We are sticking with the trend of having every clearance and transmission that we emit have a sense of purpose. So we have this, Night Cargo A114, traffic 12 to 11 o'clock, eight miles, southeast bound Airbus A320, 3,000. 
Airbus A320 site, Nikkei 8114. Good. This is working out nicely. Nikkei 8114 followed the A320. Cleared visual approach, runway 8. Now, we get on the phone. Shout line, Aguadilla Tower, R8. Position, Aguadilla. Two zero miles northwest of the field, Nikkei 8114 following JetBlue 1092 visual approach, runway 8. So, little technique here, right? Asterisk technique here. This phrase works for me. This kind of phraseology works for me, right? This is the order of what is done. Now, if you find a phrase that fits, that gets the point across, lets the Aguadilla local controller know the Nikkei 8114 is following JetBlue 1092, right? Limits the ambiguity. Let them know what the intentions of Nikkei 8114 are. Let them know the distance. Let them know that the sequence is, in fact, JetBlue 1092 followed by Night Cargo 8114, right? Using the term follow or a derivative of the word follow in there and no name a number sequence, right? Um, then use it. You know, use whatever your trainer tells you to do. Like I say, I kind of stay away from naming numbers in a sequence. That's up for the tower controller to decide. There might be a traffic, uh, there might be local traffic in the area, maybe a Coast Guard helicopter, maybe. Uh, a student, maybe a, maybe a warrior doing pattern work, right? We don't know the sequence, right? We have our sequence here, one and two, but there might be uh, a Skyhawk doing touch and goes. That might be number one right now, right? So we don't want to do that. Just don't go down that road, right? Just you have your sequence, they have theirs, you have their plan, or you have your plan and they have theirs. So really good. They, and you know, that's all you have to say. They say, Roger, and all you have to say is Night Cargo 8114, Radar service terminate, contact Aguadilla Tower 124.905. Fantastic job. You see how we're able to talk our way through this, uh, this sequence of two. We saw what it's like for visual approaches and instrument approaches alike. We talked about having every transmission have a sense of purpose, getting a job done right. Every time you click that mic, you are using your tool, right? What do we what do you have at your disposal as an air traffic controller? You have the radio and you have the radar. Sometimes you don't even have the radar, right? You just have a radio, right? So the radio is a very useful tool. So yeah, there's that little bit of tidbit for you. So good job with that and we'll see you at the next slide. Okay, so let's back this up with the rules, right? We didn't take it transmission by transmission this time, but we're gonna do it now. The rules, you follow them perfectly. 7110.65743, at locations with an operating control tower, in this case, Aguadilla Tower. The aircraft is to follow preceding aircraft and the pilot reports the preceding aircraft in sight and is instructed to follow it. Or at locations with operating control tower, the pilot reports the airport or runway in sight, but, no, but not the preceding aircraft. Radar separation must be maintained until visual separation is provided. Good. We didn't need to get to that, that third bullet point there, right? Night Cargo saw JetBlue, instructed to follow it. Very good. But if they didn't, and they happen to see the field, which sometimes happen, right? There's lights, there's blue taxiway lights, there's runway edge lights, there's the beacon, but sometimes they don't see the giant A320 in front of them. It's okay. It's perfectly plausible. That's fine. Keep some other form of separation. In this case, if you're going to give that approach clearance, you can no longer go vertical separation, right? Because we know what a visual approach clearance is. It's for them to proceed to the airport visually, right? By any means. So they're going to start descending. So keep radar separation. So keep your five miles of radar separation until they see the Airbus A320. My technique, like I said, every transmission has a purpose, right? Getting back to the tool thing. The radio is our tool. Keep pointing that jet blue out to the night cargo, right? Until they either see it or sometimes it works out. You ask Jeff, you ask the you ask the controller at Aguadilla to look out the window and he sees them both and he can separate them visually, then you have a controller applied visual separation, which is perfectly fine. But just remember, if Nikogo did not end up seeing the jet blue, you have to continue with radar separation, right? Perfectly fine, right? Jet blue's faster. Um, chances are separations can continue to increase. You had enough distance in between, but just keep that in mind. And inform the tower of the aircraft's position prior to communications transfer at controls airports. You see, we've done that without even being asked, right? Our LOA with Aguadilla Tower even reinforces that, that we have to do that to them anyways. So that's good. You would have done that anyway. So great job. You know, unbeknownst to you, you are just a compliant 7110 uh, machine and nothing gets past you. So very good with that. And I'll see you at the next slide. Great job. Pat yourself on the back. Woohoo. You did a great job. Stop the smell of flowers. You made it through your first day with Rafael Hernandez, the airport, not the man. Taking inventory of what we learned today, we learned visual and instrument approaches, how the 7110 uh, pertains to us as in route 
controllers as en route approach service controllers, right? Providing approach control services to aircraft under our care. Um, this is a great way to start some fundamentals in your radar training, right? Um, using pilot applied visual separation, in this case, you know, aircraft following each other, uh, instrument uh, approaches, learning the 7110, phraseology, knowing your chapters, where to find the information to back up everything you say. I think it was a great start to this module. We're going to do on Aguadilla. So I can't wait till we come back and talk about some more fun things with Aguadilla. So uh, my name is Steve. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I know I sure did. Remember to have your attitude be just like your separation out there in the field. Positive. I'll see you later. Thanks for joining me.